Hello everyone, in this video I will be discussing UML, which is a common vocabulary for the OO approach. The learning objectives for this video are as follows. First, you should understand the concept of UML and name its four fundamental diagrams. Next, you should be able to create a use case diagram. This is the only UML diagram that I will require you to create in this course, but I want you to also be able to read a class diagram and know what a sequence diagram is and how it relates to a use case diagram. We won't even really go over uh, the behavioral state machine diagram, which is the fourth fundamental diagram of UML. The Unified Modeling Language is a standard set of diagramming techniques for object-oriented systems analysis and design. The current version, version 2.0, was approved in the early 2000s. The objective of the Unified Modeling Language is to provide a common vocabulary of object-oriented terms and diagramming techniques. The diagrams are broken into two major groupings, structure diagrams for representing data and static relationships, and behavior diagrams for representing dynamic relationships among the objects. The textbook has a full listing of all 14 UML version 2.0 diagrams. Again, there are only four fundamental diagrams that are talked about in the textbook. Take a minute to read over these diagrams that are used. Again, we won't be talking about all of these diagrams in this course, but if you become an analyst and use the object-oriented approach, then you will need to become familiar with how all of these different diagrams work. There are four most fundamental UML diagrams out of the 14 listed on the previous slide. These four techniques dominate object-oriented projects. Use case diagrams, class diagrams, sequence diagrams, and behavior state machine diagrams. This figure from the textbook shows how these four diagrams relate to each other. The use case diagram is here on the left. It depicts at a very high level all the different use cases that are involved in a system. The sequence diagram is created for each and every use case that is in the use case diagram. A class diagram is very similar to the ER diagrams that we are doing in this class and that you learned about in ISDS 402. And a behavioral state machine diagram is created for every complex class on the class diagram. Let's talk about each of these individually. The use case diagram summarizes all of the use cases for the part of the system being modeled together in one picture. Other UML diagrams are based off of the use case diagram. The use case diagram gives context for the rest of the diagrams, similar to how the context level data flow diagram gives context for the lower level data flow diagrams. Same concept. Use case diagram elements include an actor, a name, a system boundary, and association relationships. Here's an example of a use case diagram. The actors, which are the same actors as in a written textual use case, are the stick figures that interact with the system. Management, a customer, or a salesperson could be actors in your use cases. The system boundary is the box around your use cases. These circles here represent individual use cases, so you'd have a make offer use case, an accept or reject offer use case, and a record sales contract use case. The association relationship between the actors and the use cases show that an actor can take part in a use case many times and a use case can be related to many actors. This is what these asterisks mean. Management can accept or reject many offers and the use case accept and reject offers can be executed by many different members of management. Each customer can make many offers and making an offer can be done by many customers. So these asterisks here are similar to the cardinalities in ER diagrams. If you do not have an asterisk, that means that the actor can only perform the use case once, or the use case can only be performed by one specific person. Here's an example of the textbook of a more complex use case. For our course, we're not going to worry about these more complex components of a use case diagram. We're just going to keep them simple. If you are interested in learning more about UML and use case diagrams and the object-oriented approach, I would highly encourage you to consult the textbook or other online sources for more information about these complex extends and includes and inheritance relationships on your use case diagram. Otherwise, the diagrams that you create for our course should look something like this. 
The steps in creating a use case diagram are as follows. First, you need to identify the use cases that are involved in the system. This is probably the most complex part. Once you have your use cases, draw your system boundary and place the use cases on the diagram. Then identify the actors that interact with these use cases and add the association relationships between them. Let's go back to our example. In this case, when we created this use case diagram, the first step was to think about all the different use cases or processes that are happening in the system. When we're creating a vehicle sales system, we need to know first that the system needs to be able to make an offer, we need to be able to accept or reject offers, and we need to record sales contracts. These are some of the high-level business or system requirements. Once we identified those, we've done the hardest part. Then we just place them inside the box, think about which actors are associated with these use cases, and place those relationships between our use cases and our actors. The second fundamental UML diagram is the class diagram. The class diagram is a static model. It shows the classes and the relationships among the classes. The elements of a class diagram are classes, attributes, methods, and associations. Class diagrams look a lot like ER diagrams with one exception. Class diagrams have one thing that ER diagrams do not. Can you see what that is? That's right, it's methods. A class is the main building block of a class diagram which stores and manages information in the system. Associations represent the relationships that classes have with one another. Associations also have multiplicity, which shows how an instance of an object can be associated with other instances. The multiplicity of in-class diagrams is like the cardinality that we've discussed in ER diagrams. Many times in class diagrams, it's more specific than 0, 1, or many. For example, you can see here a specified range. You can have a minimum of 2 and a maximum of 4. Or you could even have disjoint ranges like from 1 to 3 or 5. Generalization on a class diagram shows that one class, a subclass, inherits from another class, a superclass. Aggregation is used when classes actually comprise other classes. So we talked about generalization in ER diagrams in ISDS 402, but we did not talk about aggregation. For example, a car could be the aggregate of an engine, a wheel, seats, seat belts, radiator, and every other piece of a car. To create a class diagram, use some of the same steps that we use when creating ER diagrams in the structured approach. First, identify what classes you need to store information about. Identify their attributes as well as their operations. Then draw your associations between the classes. Here's an example of some initial attributes for class diagrams. Again, these should look very familiar. Next, we have a sequence diagram. A sequence diagram illustrates the objects that participate in a use case and the messages that pass between them over time for one use case. I don't expect you for this class to know exactly what everything on this sequence diagram means. You should just know that one sequence diagram corresponds to one use case from your use case diagram and it gives more detail about it. Again, this class won't cover the behavioral state machine diagram, but I highly encourage you, if you're interested, to consult the textbook for more information about it.